Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, my guest is Daniel Zhou. Daniel is a portfolio manager at China Growth at Miri Asset. And uh, today, we want to discuss recent developments in China stock markets. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, Thomas. Daniel, U.S. President Biden and China's Xi Jinping have met for a personal exchange. So what impetus with the meeting give to relations between the two countries? So from G20 meeting statements, uh, some bites um, and footage, we can clearly sense uh, the escalation from the two leaders. Of course, uh, in big picture of uh, U.S.-China, will remain in competition, especially in tech front. But after two leaders secure their political position, I think they will pivot somewhat uh, towards work in areas where they can work with. I believe China has already sent a delegation of senior uh, policy advisor to US and um, likely uh, Blinken is, will visit China back next year. So those are good signs, especially uh, for the sentiment. Hi there. Just a two second break. Before we continue with the video, just make sure to subscribe to our channel now to not miss out any updates. Thank you very much and enjoy the video now. Investors were disappointed by Xi Jinping's speech at the party congress and the priorities mentioned there. What can financial market expect from his third term? First of all, party congress is not policy meeting, it's a political meeting. And you know, with the problems and pressures uh, from both domestically as well as internationally, of course, China needs to uh, adjust its policies. However, I think after a consolidated cabinet, she can now and also have no excuse not to deliver results. So without power struggle, policy execution should be more uh, coherent and effective. And I personally have high expectation uh, for the team of Li Qiang and He Lifeng. And to be frank, I was a bit surprised, you know, at the pace of you know, how the policy rolling out uh, regarding COVID, uh, property, and internet in the past few weeks. So I think that shows the government uh, know the, what the problems are and willing to act. Common prosperity seems to be the central theme in China uh, even for the next five years. So what does this mean for, for companies? Where do investment opportunities arise from the common prosperity topic? This is a common question. <laughs> um, inequality is, I think, not only an issue in China. So I think uh, corporates with sense of social responsibility should, you know, take that into consideration. We saw that in Europe and in the US as well. So in a way we can see common pros uh, prosperity as a part of China's ESG. So, and in terms of investment, um, we will focus on opportunities uh, that are in line with policy direction or at least not against China's national interests. The short-term outlook for China's financial market revolves around the possible end of the lockdown. So how realistic is the easing of these drastic measures? This is the million dollar questions for, for <laughs> China market. From recent COVID um, you know, losing policies, like 20 measures, um, I think the direction is very clear right now. So they're gonna lose it. It's just how and how long to reach there. My base case is that it will be gradual to make sure there won't be major disruption in terms of the supply chain. And um, with vaccination, especially for elderly and the relevant medical supports are ready. So there could be some back and forth in between. This is normal for a country with 1.4 billion population and a complex industrial supply chain. China is striving for technological independence, uh, especially in the semiconductor sector. Where do investment opportunities arise? And to what extent is the U.S. government's chip ban a drag on the Chinese economy? I think the self-reliance thing will be an opportunity in the next uh, several years for China. 
the U.S. Chip Act、um, will be a concern, especially for the high tech industry. There's no doubt about it.、Um, but how will U.S. implement? I think will be interesting to watch. If U.S. is seriously impose、um, those bans, you, it will be disastrous for not not just China, but I think might also affect U.S. economy as well. And especially now, we are actually seeing U.S. tech industry are facing growth headwinds, especially next year. So yeah, the real estate crisis in China seems to be far from over. So how much of a drag is this on the attractiveness? Of the financial sector、um, and other industries in China, as I briefly mentioned earlier、uh, in the question, I think the new government knows where the problems are and how big the problems are. So they are really rolling out policy very fast to stop the bleeding. So I think that should help reducing the systematic risk, especially for the financial industries. But again, I think they need to do more. In order to see the sector、uh, really stabilize, and I think they are working on that right now. Big techs in China, like Alibaba and Tencent, have been better by a wave of regulatory actions. So, how attractive are internet companies in China nowadays? Foreign investors love internet companies. In terms of evaluation, it is trading at very attractive level. For example, Baba is only trading at single digit. Uh, PE on、um, its core earnings, right? Tencent is also attractive if we can see more regulatory shift. Uh, for example, uh, more gaming license approval, um, which is a, which I think is possible. I'm not saying that we will see high growth in the sector as we saw in the past decade. We need to take that into our consideration. China shares have lost a lot of ground this year. So, what is the current case for for Chinese equities? And、uh, yeah, where are you taking exposure with your portfolio? In terms of overall market,、uh, I think valuation is trading at a historic low. I believe last time I saw around eight point five times for MSCI China, and around ten ten point five times、um, for CSI three hundred. So at this level, I think、um, significant risk premium has already priced in. So we think the risk reward is becoming more and more attractive for next, say, six to twelve months. We are near the end of current earning cycle and entering a new policy cycle. We have already seen peak regulation in internet, the China's. Most severe property deleveraging campaign is towards the end, and China reopen could be the biggest policy stimulus to the economy, which we think will happen in the next six to twelve months. Now, in terms of portfolio construction, we are now adopt a barbell approach.、Um, at one hand, we Uh, continue overweight on those powerful secular growth trend, you know, such as EV, energy transformation, and we are also exploring opportunities、um, in the self-reliance things. And on the other hand, we are also positioning for those high-quality, you know, market darlings, leaders,、uh, which has been beaten up, you know, by Regulation and COVID in the past two years, and which could see potentially very strong rebound when those policy shift. You know, for example, internet, property, and healthcare. So this was Daniel Zhou, portfolio manager, China Growth at Mary Asset. Thank you very much, Daniel, for being with us today and sharing your insights. Thank you, Thomas.